Hello, my name is JW and this is a very quick tutorial on how to get running with Burp Free Edition uh, without having to intercept or click yes to every single little thing that your browser wants to do. This is basically my default go-to mode of using Burp just so that I have that logging of history, I can go back, I can look at what happened, I can then start editing requests as needed. So I have a fresh install of Firefox. I give Firefox mad props because it's the browser that is the easiest to control regard in regards to proxies and certificates. Uh, Chrome and IE and Safari and whatever uh, on different platforms, they use the operating system's own uh, preferences, but in Firefox it has its own self-contained settings, so I love that. So let's open up Burp. Notice this is the free version. This is nothing is what I am telling you requires the paid for version. I do encourage buying it if you do this for more than just a hobby, uh, but I'm no in no way associates associated or affiliated with Burp, I just love using it. So, no configurations, only defaults, let's go. This is the basic view. You get a lot of tabs and no data. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Very easy. You go to proxy. You go to options. You see where this proxy is running. You go here to Firefox, options, advanced network settings by default i am assuming you have no proxy uh, if your environment requires a proxy connection that requires some extra setup in the upstream proxy uh, in burp i'm not going over that i'm expecting that you have a regular home uh, connection where you don't need an upstream proxy manually set so now you go to manual proxy configuration, you look at what the IP address and port here are, obviously it's localhost by default, so no bad guys can use you as a relay, uh, so 8080, you can use it for all ports uh, all or protocols, so that's it. Uh, Firefox is now ready to go and enjoy some websites. Let's go to one of my favorite websites, so over the wire works fine. This is actually coming from my cache, I think, because by default, this is what should happen. Uh, it goes here. Notice this is highlighted, intercept, uh, and it's by default, intercept is on. I disagree with this design decision from Burp. Uh, so what you want to do is that. Take intercept off, and everything starts working here. Uh, that's the most annoying thing that uh, struck me when I was starting with Burp. You would go intercept on and you would hit this and then, yes, I want the, oh, do I want this specific, mm, forward, uh, this is pointless. Like if you are just poking around, you are trying to do recon basically. What could potentially be something I, I'm interested in? What could be a potential uh, attack vector or whatever? You don't want to be, uh, annoyed or intercepting every single request. You want first a uh, higher level glance of what you're going for. So let's go for this website here. Notice username and password. Paste it here. Not us zero. Not us zero. Okay. Never remember. You can find the password on the next level on this page. Obviously, anyone who knows anything about web would realize that this is the right way to go, but you don't need to do that because you can you can go to HTTP history. This combina combination here, proxy, HTTP history, this is your friend. This is where you want to spend most of your time. And notice here we have this detect portal, fry or fox and whatever. You don't care about these. So what you actually want is anything that's over the wire. So let's copy that part of the domain. So target scope, add, paste here any portion. If I put wire.org, it would work. But over the wire, that's more 
specific, so I want to put that. Protocol any, I don't care, I don't care about port, whatever. You could be more specific for uh, only specific sites or subdomains or whatever, but I, I only care about over the wire. So let's put that there. And notice here, by default, history logging of out of scope items is disabled. So these are still showing because they were logged before I put that scope there. But now I can actually clear history. Yes. And I will refresh this page. And now you will see this. And if I go to, uh, let's say, for example, here. Let's not go there, actually. Let's go to jw.fi. Notice it's not coming here because this is not in scope. Uh, so here's the actual scoped items. And as you guessed, here's, here you can actually click these items and you will see the request and you will see the response. Not modified. Well, that's not useful. Um, let's actually try and get that. Yeah, shift control R and now I got the full response. And here is the actual password. Uh, this is a no brainer for the first level if you know anything about web. I will not go into the further levels of Natas uh, because I want people to get them themselves. But this is how you can start working with Burp. And for example, here in the request, this is the authorization. This is the basic author authentication that you have with web. And if you didn't know, this is just base 64 encoded. So if I uh, select this here, right click, convert selection, base 64, base 64 decode. And it will show you that, well, this is exactly what I typed in, but you notice that it's in plain text. I mean, it's encoded, but it's in plain text. So if, for example, anyone is on the same Wi-Fi, and this is over HTTP, they could see my credentials for this website. So this is why you should never enter any sort of credentials over HTTP. Um, one additional thing, uh, what I could also do here uh, is show only in scope items. This is also something that you probably can easily miss that this here, you can actually click it and you get options. Uh, so you can show images or you can hide and show flash, you can hide and show HTML, whatever. Uh, so that's an item uh, or option, sorry. Um, then this is HTTP, but obviously if we go to uh, an HTTPS site, this is not secure. Well, that's obvious because we are doing man-in-the-middle attack, basically, and this is working exactly as planned. But uh, chances are that you actually need to uh, test some HTTPS sites. So what you need to do is first go to HTTP, burp. And burp will automatically give you this web UI, and here you can get the certificate. So download the certificate. By default, it goes to download. Uh, then you go back to Options, Advanced, Certificates, View Certificates, here in Authorities, Import, and select the certificate that you just downloaded. What you want to do with Port Swigger, Port Swigger is the maker of uh, Burp. So you want to identify websites so it can sign SSL certificates. And that's it. OK. OK. Then we go back here. Try again going to HTTPS and it works and that's it. And notice it's not logging here because this is not on over the wire. And that's your basic use case for burp, proxy and HTTP history. If you want to start changing things up, you can, for example, right click here, send to repeater and in repeater, press go, you get the result. But let's see what happens if we, uh, for example, uh, try to change the username and password. Let's put not as one and not as one. I mean, surely the first level can't be this easy. Of course, here we need to put not as one also as the host name. Uh, 
remember to base64 encode this again and go well it says not authorized so basically that wasn't the correct one so let's go back and up go back convert base64 decode no notice you should learn these some of these shortcuts quickly because you're going to be using them so decode let's put back not as zero not as zero and not as zero then control b base64 encode go and i get the result and that's it that's as easy as burp gets i understand there's a lot of different tabs and targets and uh, lots of data a lot of it is unnecessary 99 percent of my time in burp or let's say 95 percent of my time i spend here proxy http history looking at this sometimes if i need to I will put intercept off uh, on so that I can alter the outgoing uh, posts or if you want to intercept also the responses here in options just check this so you can also change whatever is coming back so if we do this go to intercept go back to Natas refresh uh-huh without caching there we go this is the response that's coming and now I can write here h1 burp is awesome and then forward and then let's remove intercept and here you can see the edited content so you can do that if you want with intercept but 95% of the time this is what's active in my burp Sometimes I put something into repeater uh, and try changing the parameters ab around, but that's it. Do this, you will get a nice history of whatever you've been doing. You can go back, you can use these as evidence for your pen test or your exam or your lab report, whatever. You can use these that, hey, this is the request, uh, this is the response, this shouldn't happen. For example, if you tried some uh, XSS or whatever, and you could show that, hey, I input here uh, script alert or whatever uh, here, and then in the response, this was repeated back to me, this is bad. So you can use this as evidence. But for me, the most important bit is that it's there if I need it. What did I use as the payload? What What URLs did I use? Whatever. It's all there and you can now select all of these, save items and then save them as whatever, uh, uh, basically burp requests.xml and you can base 64 or if you don't want to, uh, this will put them in clear text, uh, the responses uh, there. And that's it. Thank you.